In this video, we will discuss three properties of addition and one property of subtraction. And then at the end of the lesson, we will also discuss how to add numbers together. So beginning with the first property, we have the commutative property of addition. And this property says that the numbers in an addition problem can be rearranged without changing the answer. So for example, we have five plus four, that is the same thing as four plus five. All right, notice the order of the numbers that we are adding does not change the final answer. So that is your commutative property. And in math notation, we can replace the numbers five and four with the letters A and B, where A and B are just representing any number. All right, so here we see in math notation, A plus B equals B plus A. The order of the numbers are changing. And a way to remember this is the commutative property is we can look at the root word commute. So commutative, you see the word commute. So the word commute, spelled with a E at the end, the word commute means to travel or to move. So for example, your parents might commute to work, meaning they have to make a drive to get to work. All right, so commute has the idea of moving or traveling. So in this context, okay, what is moving or traveling would be the numbers. So if we move the numbers around, it does not change the final answer. Right here we see the five and the four. We have five plus four, but if we move the numbers around, so the five goes over here and the four goes in the front, notice the numbers are moving. So that is the idea of commute. So that would be your commutative property, is when you're moving the numbers around, and when you do that, it does not change the final answer. The next property is the associative property. So the associative property says that the grouping of the numbers in an addition problem can be rearranged. All right, so what this would look like is if we had three numbers added together, Let's say we had three plus four plus five. Now the associative property says that it doesn't matter if we put parentheses around the three and the four and add these numbers first, or if we put the parentheses around the four and the five and add those numbers first. So if we try to add this, so on the left side here, three plus four in the parentheses, if we do that first, we get seven. So we have seven plus five, which equals 12. Notice on the right side of this equation, if we add the 4 and the 5 together first, what we have is 3 plus 9. And 3 plus 9 is still equal to 12. So we have verified that it does not matter how we group together the numbers in an addition problem. All right, we can group together the numbers in any particular order. So that is the associative property illustrated. And then in math notation, we can replace these numbers with the letters A, B, and C. So here in math notation, we see the parentheses around A plus B, and then the plus C on the outside. That's equal to A plus, and the parentheses over here, around the B and the C. So that is in math notation, how we write the associative property. Now a way to remember this property is in the word associative, we see the root word associate. All right, so the word associate, we can see in that word associative. Now the word associate in English has the idea of being in a group. So for example, like if you associate with a particular group of people, that means you're part of that group. You associate with them. So same idea here with numbers. If we associate numbers together, that means we put them in the same group. So the word associate has the idea of grouping. So if you see the grouping changing, and in this case the grouping is the parentheses, that's how we group together numbers. If the grouping is changing, or the parentheses, the numbers in the parentheses are changing, that would be your associative property. 
So we have the commutative property, we have the associative property. The third property for addition is your identity property. Now this property says that adding zero does not change the original number. So for example, if we have six plus zero, adding zero doesn't change the number, right? It's still gonna be six. Another example, if we had the number 100, okay, if we add zero, we still have 100 as our answer. Adding zero does not change the original number. We started with 100 over here, we're gonna end with 100. All right, and then in math notation, we can replace the number six here and here with the letter A. All right, so we just keep this in general. A can be representing, representing any number. All right, so here we have a plus zero equals a. And that is the way we can express this property in math notation. Now, a way to remember this property is if we think of the word identity, okay? If you are told that someone is changing their identity, okay, what that means is they're changing the way they look, right? So in this context here with math, all right, the identity property says that we're not changing the way the number looks. All right, we started with a number. So we started with say 100, okay? That's the, your original look, or so to speak. Adding zero doesn't change the way the number looks. It's still gonna stay the same. So it does not change the identity or the value of the original number. All right, so that's the idea with the identity property. And then our fourth property is a property dealing with subtraction. And this one we can just state as the zero principle of subtraction. So it's kind of like the identity property, but instead of adding zero, we're gonna subtract zero. So subtracting zero also does not change the original number. So for example, if we had eight minus zero, our answer is still gonna be eight. It doesn't matter the size of the number. We can have 1,000 minus zero. That would still equal 1,000. It does not change the original value. So this is the zero principle of subtraction because we're dealing with zeros and subtract, subtracting. All right, so it's like the identity property, but instead of adding, we're subtracting zero. And again, in math notation, we can replace the number eight with the letter A. So A can represent any number. So we have here A minus zero equals A. So A can be one, could be two, could be negative four, doesn't matter. Any number minus zero will be the number you started with. So those are the four properties. We had commutative, associative, identity, and the zero principle of subtraction. So on the next slide here, we're gonna get some practice with those four different properties. So you can get some practice with this. You're welcome to pause the video at any point to see if you know the answer and then unpause when you wanna check your work. So here are a couple examples. First one, we are given eight plus something equals eight. And what we're trying to do here is we are filling in the blank and also naming the property. All right, so the blank would be zero because eight plus zero equals eight. And this property is your identity property because your identity property says that adding zero does not change the identity or value of the original number. Our second question, here we see four plus and then parentheses around five plus seven. Over here we have a blank plus five in the parentheses and then plus seven on the outside. All right, so in the blank, notice the number that is missing on the right side is the number four, right? We need the number four to match up with what we have on the left side. And then, then notice what's changing in this equation. What's changing is the grouping, right? Here, we have the five and the seven grouped together. And then on the right side, we have the four and the five grouped together. So the grouping is what's changing and that would be your associative property because we're changing the association or the grouping of the numbers. 
Third example, we have 6 plus 7 equals 7 plus something. So the number in the blank would be 6. All right, 6 plus 7 equals 7 plus 6. And what's changing in this problem is that the numbers are being moved. All right, we move the 6 and the 7 around to get 7 and 6. So the moving would be your commutative property. Because remember, the word commute means to travel or to move. Next example, we have 7 minus 0 equals something. Well, 7 minus 0 would equal 7. And what this would be is the 0 principle of subtraction. Because we're subtracting 0. And subtracting 0 does not change the original number. So that was your 0 principle of subtraction. So we've talked about the four properties. And then to finish off this lesson, we want to do a review of addition. And the reason is because in a following lesson, we're going to increase the difficulty. So at this point, you should hopefully know how to do these types of problems, but we're reviewing it so that we can jog your memory because in the next lesson, we're going to be expanding on this, on this topic and we're gonna be adding larger numbers. All right, so here we're gonna do a couple examples with addition. If you know how to do it, feel free to try this on your own. If not, you can follow along with the first one and then see if you can do the other ones by yourself. So here we have three numbers that we're adding, 21, 15, 36. Now when you're adding numbers, okay, when you're adding numbers, make sure that we have the numbers lined up, first of all. So make sure that over here is the ones column, make sure over here is the tens column, and then we keep going if needed, hundreds, thousands, etc. So line up by place value. And then to begin this addition process, you're going to begin by adding this ones column. So here we have 21, 15, and 36. The ones column would be the first, uh, first row of numbers on the right over here. So we have one, five, and six. So what we do is we add those together, one plus five plus six, and that gives you 12. So what we do is we take from the number 12, okay, it's 12, we take the two and we put it down here. So we take the two and then the one that was left over, we carry that over on the top of the tens column. So now we can add the tens column with that one on the top. So we have one plus two plus one plus three. So one plus two is three. 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. So your answer when you add all three numbers together is 72. And we see that typed up right here. Now that you've seen one example, see if you can try the second example on your own. So pause the video if you need to. So here we're adding 51, 12, and 63. So again, we're gonna start by adding this ones column right here, the one, two, and three. One plus two plus three would be six. All right, so we write a six right here. And then we can add the tens column. Five plus one plus six would give you 12. So we just write the number 12 in the front of six, and your final answer would be 126. And we see that typed up right here. So hopefully you got that correct. If not, we have one more example you can try. We have 19 plus 37 plus 82. So to add these three numbers together, remember again, we're gonna start with the ones column. So it's the far right side. So we add this right column. We have nine plus seven plus two. Nine plus seven is 16. 16 plus two is 18. So what we do is we take the eight, put it here, and then the one that was uh, left over, we put up here on the top of the tens column, and then we add that with the other numbers. So now we have one plus one plus three plus eight. One plus one is two, two plus three is five, five plus eight is 13. So we write 13 in the front. So your final answer, when you add those three numbers together, is 138. So in this lesson, we have 
talked about the different properties of addition and then subtraction, and we finished off by reviewing how to add two digit numbers together. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.